Welcome back from the ad break and let's continue with our lesson. So now we are going to be working more on those application questions. Let's get to our first question. So here we have been given, considering the following numeric pattern, we have a five, a seven and a nine. Now, determine the rule for this pattern in algebraic form. But for us to determine that rule, remember we need to understand how we move from the first term to the second term and from the second term to the third term. So let's see, how do we get to the seven from the five? Yes, we are adding a two. And from the seven to the nine, we see there that we are again adding a two. So our difference here, or our constant difference, of course, is our two. And how did we find that two? We simply said our seven minus our five, which is how we calculate our constant difference by saying the second term minus the first term or the third term minus that second term. So let's try and find our rule for this pattern. So how are we going to find the rule for this pattern? Remember, when we have a constant difference, we need to find that relationship between the constant difference, the term number, and the term itself. So we know that we are going to take our difference and we are going to multiply it by our constant difference. And of course, we need to add or subtract that constant value. So let's use just any two of our terms to find this rule. So we are going to use the first term and we are going to say one multiplied by that two. Now we are using one because we are working with the first term. And of course we are using two because that is our constant difference. Now we need to find what we are going to add or subtract so that we get an answer of our first term, which is the five. So we know that one multiplied by two is of course our two. So how will we move from the two to the five? Yes, we are going to add our three because from two, if we just add three, then we get that five. Let's take another term, the third term, and we are going to say here three multiplied by two. And what are we going to add or subtract to get to our third term, which is the nine? So as we can see there, that is going to be 3 multiplied by 2. And we're using the 3 because we are working with the third term. And we're multiplying by 2, which is the constant difference. 3 multiplied by 2 is indeed a 6. And how do we move from the 6 to the 9? Yes, we are going to add our 3. So that is our rule there, as we can see, that that constant value is a positive 3, or we are adding by 3. Three. So this means that our rule is going to be Tn, which is equals to our constant difference multiplied by our um, term number. And from there, we are going to add our 3. Let's look at the next question there. It says determine the 13th term of this sequence. So we are going to use our rule that we have, and we are going to determine the 13th rule. So the 13th rule means our term number is 13. So we are going to multiply our constant difference with our term number, and then we are going to add three onto that answer. That means that our 13th term here, we know that two multiplied by 13 is a 26, and when we add a three onto that 26, our answer is a 29. Let's move on to the next question. Now the next question here, we have a 15, an 11, and a 7. So 15, 11, and 7, we are first going to find that rule. Now we can see that from the first term to the second term, we are subtracting 4. From the second term to the third term, we are subtracting 4, which means that our difference is a negative 4. Now, how are we going to find that rule? Remember, we are going to take our constant difference, multiply it with our term number, add or subtract a constant. Let's use the first term. So the first term there, we are going to say at the negative 4 multiplied by 1, and we are going to add or subtract something to get our first term, which is our 15. So we know that negative 4 multiplied by 1, that is going to give us a negative 4. And how do we get from negative 4 to 15? 
Yes, you are correct if you think we are going to add a 19. Let's use our second term to check if that adding 19 is the correct constant value that we need to add. So that's going to be a negative 4, which is our difference, multiplied by 2 because we are working with a term 2. And in the end, after we add or subtract the constant value, it is supposed to give us an answer of 11. So we know that a negative 4 multiplied by a 2, that is going to give us a negative 8. So how do we move from negative 8 to a positive 11? Yes, again, we add 19. So this means that our rule here is Tn is equals to negative 4 multiplied by our term, num term number and we add 19. Now how can we use this rule to find the 17th term? So our rule is negative 4 multiplied by our term number and we add 19. So this is going to be negative 4 multiplied by 17 and we are going to add a 19. Sorry, that is the 17th term. Remember, we need to show what term we are working with. So that would be the 17th term. So what answer do you get when you multiply um, negative 4 with 17? We get a negative 68, but of course, from there we need to add 19, which is going to give us a negative 49. And that is our 17th term. Let's go over and look at our next application question. Considering the following numeric pattern, we have 5 for the first term, we have 25 for the second term, and we have 125 for the third term. Can you see how we move from the first term to the second term? Yes, we multiply by 5. And again, from the second term to the third term, we multiply by by 5. That means here we have a constant ratio, which is, of course, our 5. So how are we going to write our rule? Because our first question says we must determine the rule for this pattern in algebraic form. Well, we are going to start off with our ratio, which is the 5. And now when we look for the relationship between the term number and the term itself, we can see that from the ratio, we are just going to put the term number as an exponent. And that, of course, gives us the rule. So that means 5 exponent n. And if we need to check that, we can see that the first term is 5 exponent 1, which is 5. The second term is 5 exponent 2, which of course is 25 from our square numbers. And the third term is 5 exponent 3, of course, from um, our cube numbers. So we can see that, of course, this is how this term number, or this is how this numeric pattern is now written if we use that ratio. It gives us the same pattern. Now let's go and calculate our seventh term since as well now we have that rule. So we have that rule which is Tn is equals to 5 exponent n. Now if we find T7 which is the seventh term we are going to say 5 exponent 7. So we are going to say 5 exponent 7. Then our seventh term is going to give us an answer of if you have 78,125, then of course you are correct. Let's go over to the next question. So again, we have been given here a numeric pattern, 1, 7, and 13. So how are we moving from the first term to the second term? And how are we moving from the second term to the third term because for us to determine the rule of this pattern we need to know if there is a constant ratio a constant difference so now we have one to seven we can see that that we are adding a six and again from seven to thirteen we are adding a six this is our constant difference which is that six do you remember how to find the rule we need to take our 
term number multiply it with our constant difference and then add or subtract a constant value so we are just going to use our first term and our third term maybe to calculate or to find this constant difference so we are going to say 6 multiplied by 1 what do we add or subtract to get to 1 now 6 multiplied by 1 is 6 but from 6, we need to subtract 5 so that we get to our 1. What about the third term? Of course, you can also use the second term. It will be correct. So that will be 6 multiplied by 3. And what are we going to add or subtract to get to 13, which is our third term? Of course, 6 multiplied by 3 is 18. And yes, we are going to subtract a 5 to get to that 18. I'm sorry, to get to the 13, rather. So this means that our term or our rule here in algebraic form is going to be 6 multiplied by the term number and we subtract our 5. Now the next question there says, which term in the, in the pattern is equal to 115? Now we already have a rule for this pattern. We have 6n minus 5. Now we already have what the pattern is equals to, and that is 115. So we already have the number or the answer. We need to know what position, which is the term number, which is n. So what position does 115 hold in this pattern? Now, of course, for us to solve for this um, numeric pattern, we need to apply our algebraic um, knowledge. So on the left-hand side, we have 115, and on the right-hand side, we have 6n minus 5. So for us to get to that n, we need to apply the additive inverse of that minus 5. So we know that, that uh, the additive inverse of that minus 5 is, of course, a positive 5. So what we are going to do here is to say that we are going to add 5 on the one side and of course add 5 on the other side because this is an equation what we do on the left we must do on the right as well to keep our equation balanced. So we are going to be left with 6n on the uh, right hand side and of course on the left hand side when we say 115 plus 5 that will give us 120. Now from there we are going to apply the uh, multiplicative inverse of 6 and we know that that is just going to let's just rewrite that so that we are not uh, confused so we are now going to be left with n on the right hand side and on the left hand side we are going to divide uh, by 6 and we did that by applying the multiplicative inverse of 6 which of course is 1 sixth and then we are going to be left with, of course, on your calculator, you can say 120 divided by 6, or how many 6s do we find in 120? And of course, our answer there is going to be 20. So this means that our uh, or 115 is the 20th term in this sequence. Let's look at a last question. Now we have there considering the following a numeric pattern. Now when you see fractions, you should not, they should not scare you. You just need to find the pattern. So we have there a one, a one half, one third and one fourth. Now remember, or one quarter, remember that this is the first term and this is the second term, this is the third term and this is the fourth term. To help you work with fractions, it would be easier to make sure that all the numbers are represented as fractions. So if we were to rewrite this pattern, we can say it is one divided by one, which is the same as one whole for that first term. Now that second term is one half, the third term is one third, and the fourth term is one quarter. Of course, we can continue that pattern. But what is the relationship that you notice between the term number and the term itself? Well, if you are saying that you notice that as a denominator, that is actually the term number itself, because we have the first term there, the second term there, 
the third term there and the fourth term there, we can see that as a numerator, it is constantly a one. So we can see that our rule is going to be one divided by the term number itself. And that is the rule for this pattern. You see, it looked challenging, but it was actually quite a workable question. Let's quickly go to an ad break and then we'll see you just now.